Okay, welcome everybody to today's class. Today we're looking at chapter two of Spinoza's Ethics. So it's a philosophy class again. If you're looking for a grammar class or a vocabulary class, they'll be coming later in the week. Um, I'm going to do chapter two of uh, this book. It's called Ethics. It's by the uh, philosopher Spinoza. Um, so I wanted to talk about chapter two today. And in chapter two, he deals with the origin and nature of the mind. Chapter one was about God, but we learn in that first um, lesson that he could have used the word God. He could have used the word nature. He does explicitly say God or nature. And he could have used the word cosmos, I suppose, or universe, because really he's referring to everything that is. But it, he has to be careful with the word that he chooses because obviously people already have a lot of ideas connected to these words. And so when you say God to one person, it could mean something completely different to when you say God to another person. So he's trying to be as clear as possible. And being honest, he does a very good job on a very difficult theme. Um, so we saw that He's really hypothesizing this uh, substance. This is what we saw in the first class in chapter one. He has to have this idea of substance because he points out that if we believe in finite things, and most people do believe that there are finite things like bodies and planets and stars and animals and rocks and, and uh, blades of grass or whatever, obviously there are these finite things around us. And if we believe in these finite things, well, they can only exist in something which is infinite. And he considers that thoughts, thoughts, ideas are finite things and extended stuff is a finite thing. And so both of them must exist as different expressions of the same one substance, the same one thing which is always here and it's only thanks to that thing being here that any of us can have any ideas at all or even have a body. It's only in thanks to this infinite thing that he calls substance, but perhaps which you might call the universe or if you're more theologically minded, you might call God. Um, OK, so I think it's quite hard to disagree with him here. If you believe that things are finite, and I don't think anybody out there is going to say, no, I don't believe things are finite, but maybe there are some. But if you believe in finite things, in finite objects around you, they must exist in something bigger than they are. And if it's just another finite thing, well, that finite thing must exist in something bigger than it is. And in the end, you get to this infinite thing called substance. But you could call it a number of other words if you wanted to. And so that's really what I was trying to explain in chapter one. It's quite a difficult idea to comprehend in many ways. But um, I hope that I made that clear in the first class. And so he believed that all of this that made everything else possible, this God or this nature or this cosmos. He believed it was infinite and eternal. It was self-caused. Nothing can cause it because it's infinite and eternal. And so it's self-caused. Only finite things, only limited things can be caused by other finite things. And they always are. And so on and so on and so on into infinity. Um, and of course, finite things will always be limited. So in chapter two, chapter two is called the origin and nature of the mind. But a lot of chapter two goes into the origin and nature of extended stuff. Um, no, it doesn't just go on about extension. It goes on about thought as well. But he has to talk about extension as well because he explains that extension is it's like the mirror of the uh, world of thought. The world of extension is the mirror of the world of thought. It's actually expressing one and the same substance. So 